You've been playing for a while. People have been joining the server. Some people have been leaving the server. But what they leave behind can range anywhere from a tent and a couple land claims to massive properties filled with goods and huge buildings. So how do you get rid of all these properties and reclaim that land for use by other players? I'm going to show you how that's done and take control of that situation as a citizen without needing administrative authority. So this is a little bit of a problem on almost every eco server. Players that join for some period of time will leave the server eventually and also leave behind all their junk for the rest of the players to have to deal with. Historically, removal of any properties has fallen to the server administrator and is really the only person that could seize control of someone else's claims. It's a pretty powerful action and not to be taken lightly, but it can also be a bit of a headache to reach out to your admin, ask for removal of property and wait for them to take action. Not to mention the poor admin that probably gets inundated with dozens of different kinds of requests for things every day. But in 9.0, with the revised law system, this is something that can be put into the hands of the players. So let me show you how. First, it's a good idea to establish a demographic that will identify when a player is abandoned. This is something that can be set and changed from server to server. And on our server, we have it set at 21 days. Now, just because 21 days has passed, doesn't mean we're going to automatically reclaim someone's property. That is a bad idea. It just means that it's subject to action if it's needed. Abandoned is a special demographic though that can't be changed at the normal Census Bureau tables, similar to the active and everyone demographics. But if you do want a different time frame on your server, you could create a new demographic that will look at the number of hours online and however many days you want to consider a person abandoned and create your own demographic, if you want. Second, you want to establish who you want to have this authority outside of someone that might be the server admin. It's an extremely powerful position, as you can imagine. This station is now the ultimate power in the universe. You're seizing people's property and its contents, so they have to be absolutely 100% trusted not to abuse that kind of power. In fact, as a little bit of side advice, the law system is so powerful now in 9.0 you might want to consider keeping your courts and government tables somewhat locked and not open to the public. We had it that way for a very long time, an open court system where anyone could propose a law or change a law and set it to vote. But there wound up being too many issues with that, and trolls exist in virtually every game. There's people that drop in on a one-time basis just to see what they can wreck, or older players that have weeks and weeks of playtime on a server, become disgruntled, and decide to leave their mark with one final act of sabotage. And I've seen both. I find your lack of faith disturbing. Third, you need a law that's going to actually give a person this authority. And this is what it looks like. You start with the event trigger of on-property transfer, and you're given two parameters one being the current owner and one being the new owner. The current owner you can leave as any citizen, but it's the new owner where you want to designate the individuals or the roles that are trying to initiate this property transfer. In the if part of the statement, you will then also specify the titles or people that are doing this action. And what's important here is that you'll need to hit the little gear for advanced properties and make sure the citizen is set to new owner. It seems a little duplicative of the trigger and maybe there's something here that's not needed, but we tried several permutations of this law before we finally got it to work. This one goes there, that one goes there, right? And this one does work. With the if part of the statement done, 
you go to the then clause and establish a subcondition that will evaluate the demographic of the abandoned player. Here in this part, you also want to click the gear for advanced options and make sure this is set to the current owner. The final piece is to then actually take control of this property in the subconditions of the then clause. You'll want to select the ignore authorization function that is going to execute. So overall, the law is triggering on a property transfer, and if one of your trusted individuals is going to be the new owner, then we make sure the current owner is part of the abandoned demographic, and if they are, we ignore the authorization on the property and let that property transfer action go through. From there, the actual transfer of the property is pretty easy. You go to the property and use your claim stake. Look at the property and press E and then click on the gear next to the owned by name. It'll bring up a list of people in different titles and you can select whoever you want the property rights to be transferred to. It doesn't necessarily have to be the trusted individual that's doing the action. It could be somebody else if that's how you want to set it up. Once it's transferred though, you're probably not done manipulating this particular property. Even in the very beginnings of the game, people will get wood carts and other types of things considered vehicles in the game, where the rights to be able to interact with those things don't transfer along with the property. And it doesn't matter if those vehicle things are setting on the property or not. So how do you deal with those? That's a little bit different and a different mechanism. So let me show you how that's done. You can keep and use the same trusted individuals that will have authority to do this action, but you will need a little bit of a different law to be able to make this work. Even though carts and trucks and things like that are associated with deeds that you can see in the real estate office, vehicles in the game are not exactly considered property. Land, it says. So the property transfer really didn't give us the options to be able to select vehicles as the things we were interacting with. At least that's not how it seemed to us. There could be some change of this in the near future. So this is what you do. You select a different triggering event of open action. This trigger will fire whenever you open the interface on any item. So you also specify all the different kinds of vehicles that exist in the game. And potentially, any one of these things could be the object you need to take control of. You then specify the people or titles that will have this trusted authority in the if part of the statement. And from there, it's a simple matter of putting the ignore authorization as the action to take in the then part of the statement. Now, you might be asking, why didn't we apply this against the abandoned demographic? You could if you want to, but for us, we wanted to be able to use this law to temporarily take control of different vehicles that had teleported into some undesirable location or flipped over and were blocking a road. And if you've played Eco very long, you've had one of these things happen. Mobile things like carts and trucks won't go far, but they will teleport vertically up to the top of a mountain or deep into somebody's mine. Or you can log back into the server and find your vehicle in some sort of unusual position. So this law allowed at least a couple people to be able to move these things for folks that may not be abandoned, but just weren't online. And all we wanted to do is get them out of the way. How to actually take control of these vehicles was a little bit tricky, and it took me several minutes to actually figure it out even after our master law builder, Christoph, gave me explicit directions. So let me show you how that's done. You look at the vehicle until the name appears over it. I've never actually paid a whole lot of attention to that name above objects on the screen, but it turns out to be critical Warning. Warp core breach in 60 seconds. for being able to do this action. You hover over that name and shift click on the name. This will open up a window that's normally something you don't see when you interact with one of these vehicles. And it gives you pretty much the same options you saw interacting with a property using your claim stake. 
you click on the gear next to the owned by name and voila, you're able to assign ownership to whoever you want. There's a whole separate issue about what to do with all this stuff on people's property and dispose of it in a way that won't upset your economy. But that's another even larger topic for another video I'll talk to you about later and one that you'll need to like and subscribe for to make sure you don't miss.